know my story, right? Whenever you're ready. Yeah, well, everything's very conversational. Yeah, we'll just have it like we're having a conversation. So I started with um, back in 2000 as a general contractor builder. So uh, for uh, eight years, I built homes across the way on Long Beach Island. And then the, the economy took a slide in 2008, and I got into the environmental business. So for 15 years, I've been doing mold work, uh, mold testing and remediation. And I've known Kristen uh, Santarelli for about, God, probably almost 30 years. So Kristen started this um, Hearts of Mercy organization about 15 years ago. And I participated as a, uh, uh, a donor supporter. And then um, it, it, six years ago, I got involved as a volunteer. And she came to me and she said, we need uh, board members. So I got on the board and then she came to me and said, we need a president. So I became president <laughs> of the board. So I'm going on year five as president of the board. And I've been, uh, most of my life, I'm almost 70 now, but most of my life I've been a business person trying to make money doing business. Um, two years ago, uh, going on three, I said to her after we did a golf tournament and we raised about $4,000 after spending 24000 to make that happen. Mm -hmm. Of course, you get the twenty four back, but then you get make four grand. Mm -hmm. And I said to her, we're working really hard and spend a whole lot of money to make a little bit. And then the rest of the year, we do fundraisers of all different kinds. And I thought to myself uh, first uh, that I don't want to keep doing this. It's nothing I enjoy begging for money. Um, so I went to her and I said, listen, my, my thought is we start a business. And the sole purpose of the business is to have a sustainable income for Hearts of Mercy. It's not for us individually to make money, but it's to fund the nonprofit. I said, why don't you do some research? Because she's really good at that online stuff. And then let me know what you find and we'll talk about it. So she came back a little while later, wasn't long. And she spreads this thing out on the desk about uh, hemp. Now, I'm not a farmer, never been a farmer. Um, but she comes from a family uh, of farmers and has about 3,000 acres of farmland in Kansas. So that's where her head went when we talked about a business, because that's her background, right? So I read through it. Uh, being a builder, like I say, that's why I started with that. Uh, I saw this whole building opportunity coming up uh, down the road with hemp products. And uh, I'm an old hippie, so, you know, helping the world out, the planet is a good thing. So I said, all right, let's give this a roll. So we're going into year three. And we started the business and I, uh, and we sat down and talked and thought, what are we going to do with this to kick it off? And we came to understand there's three parts of the, of the hemp world. There's the grower, the processor, and the manufacturer. Now, uh, we weren't ready to grow hemp in Kansas yet because her farmland is uh, rented out to, for, of generations of farmers. And those leases come up in 2027. So we knew we couldn't do anything till then. So we're not going to farm. Uh, processing is a multi-million dollar pro proposition to start a processing plant. We don't have that. And we're not going to manufacture anything. Now, the underlying effort across the country in hemp is education. Because nobody's going to do anything with the hemp until they understand it and come to learn about it. So she came up with the idea of uh, educating. And then we came across uh, Kansas State University by looking into which universities are on the forefront of education in hemp. And she reached out to uh, the architectural department there to a professor by the name of Michael Gibson and uh, suggested that we fund a project for him to build a mobile hemp exhibit. And he accepted that. So we gave the university $10,000 and his graduates, he put the program together for his graduate students to build this thing. And they did. And it came out really wonderful. Um, and we took it down uh, the first year to the Kansas State Fair, which was a great experience because people, uh, although Kansas is kind of on the forefront of hemp, not everybody still knows about it. So as people were walking through this, they were amazed at the fact that when you walk in there, you have a different feeling for it. 
Uh, the sound is different. The temperature is different. And then we could point to them the different parts of hemp that are used to make this, and they can actually see how you build with hemp. Mm -hmm. Because before that, we were trying to tell people about it, tell people what hempcrete is, tell them how it works. But it's it's foreign to most people. But when you walk into a structure that's built with it and you point it out, that's what the wall is made of, and they see it, it's much more understandable. That's no, that's that makes a lot of sense. And so, what is the uh, as far as that goes with the revenue streams and stuff like that? You had mentioned about bringing this through, so you sell do the tickets for that and the events. And then I saw there's some bags and things like that too. So there's some merch as well. That's a kind of a revenue, rev rev ah, excuse me, revenue generating program for you. So what we decided to do with this is basically offer this to the industry at no charge. Mm -hmm. So in order to get it from place to place, the people who want it need to pay for the right. transportation, but we don't charge for it. So we've been to uh, several places. We've been to Topeka, Kansas, Dodge City, Kansas, Great Bend, Kansas. Then from there, it came across to Pennsylvania, to Lancaster. So we did an event there. Then it went to Penn State University, then Delaware Valley College. And then last week we were up in Cornell with it, up in upstate New York, and now it's here for our workshop. This is excellent, yeah. So all we're doing with this is trying to help the industry. And uh, the little other things we're doing as revenue streams, like you say, are simply to help put some money in the coffers, right? Not much is happening, but we're trying. We're, yeah, yeah. Plus, we're, the thing about Kristen that's wonderful, and, and, and you are an example of this, is she's a great person to reach out to people and connect to, right? Somehow you guys got right. Yeah, yeah. No We've been idea. talking for months, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so she's really good at, I mean, she's turned me on to people around the world that I, I've talked to. Um, so she does that really well. And now we're in the industry only two years. And because of this being one, uh, one of two in the country, really, uh, where it's a mobile exhibit for hemp building, um, and her persistence of talking to people, they know who Right Coast Up is. Mm -hmm. They know who Kristen is. <laughs> so at Cornell last week, uh, for example, there were, I don't know, maybe 100 people from different places in the world. Of course, of course Cornell is also a leading university in him. And uh, I got to speak there for us. But the introduction by the fellow who was running it, uh, referred to uh, 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 Right Coast Hemp and Kristen Santorelli. And everybody else, Kristen, Kristen. And blah. so being a new company in an industry and having a, a made a dent to the point where people know who we are just because we decided to do something to give rather than to receive initially. So I think it, as a businessman, that's a great way to get yeah. into an industry. I oh, mean, absolutely. People spend tons of money just to learn for that recognition. And and like, we, yeah. we did it in a in a kind of unique way yeah. that helps the industry I, as well as I us. I love it because you 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 very much it's a new mentality. I, I'm 20 years in sales, uh, wholesale sales and alcohol and everything like that. So I worked for distributors, vice president, ran all kinds of stuff oh. like that. Now in my world, my world is in showing, not selling. So now what I've always been doing, which is telling stories, yeah. whether it be a sell sheet or whatever else, <laughs> now we're telling stories like now. It's, and it's exactly, I resonated very well with what you guys were doing with this because it's exactly that. It's like yeah. we could drop 50 grand and do a whole ad campaign and video work and all this, but what's the point? But now we can tangibly bring this to you yes. and bring an experience that goes for multiple places. And I think that's that's really cool. And I really think that that's a really great way to do it because it's not just wasting money and it's not spending money. It's tangibly giving an education, which today yeah. I'll say, it, and I say this a lot on my podcast, it's like today well, I'm a big advocate of technology. We're sitting here in front of an iPad, but we also need to acknowledge what we've lost from the tangible aspect of learning. Yeah, sure. And I think that that what you're doing is something that's saving. I talk a lot about the analog and digital balance of life yes. and like how important it is. Yes. And this is a hundred percent example of that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I feel the same. I, I want to create a t-shirt that says I'm vinyl. Yeah. <laughs> I'm vinyl, but you can, you can, uh, or you can, I'm vinyl, but you can stream me or something, yeah, like, something that. like that. I think it would work, man. <laughs> that's good. I like that. I like that. So yeah. that's, that's why this is here. And that's how we determined to get into yeah. the industry. And the other thing is coming from New Jersey. Um, there is no processing plant within what typically in the industry says, if you're going to grow, you want to be within about 150 miles of a processing plant. There's nothing here. So we really can't start growing yet, although right. we want to. 
Uh, we can't afford to create a processing plan. It's millions of dollars. Uh, we could probably put a business plan and go after it. But like I say, I'm going to be 70. I'm not up for that right now. I, I would rather just be a farmer and grow up. I there's a, there's cool. a piece, too, though, that I think you guys can make a larger impact without getting inundated with the, the overhead and all the things of processing. Right. Like, I think that where you guys are going with this show, you're like, you're really, you're good at the showing, not selling and the education. Right. I really think you guys can make a big impact well, with that. You know, I think, I think that's great. Yeah. This workshop yeah. is our first workshop. Yeah. Right. So we figured we're going to do this have someone like you come in and film it. So right. we have, uh, you know, background material now. And when we were up in Cornell, one of the things I said when we were, when I was speaking about us was that, listen, uh, next weekend we're doing a workshop in New Jersey. We now have the people and the concept of putting workshops together. So if anybody wants to do a workshop anywhere in the country, get in touch with us. We can, we can make that happen yeah. for you. We can be a supplier That's of awesome. workshops. Yeah. And maybe we make a grand uh, pop. But if we do four or five in right. a year, you know, we're making a couple bucks. Yeah. And right now, the sustainability of Right Coast Hemp is almost nothing because it's all done within the parameter of our businesses right. that exist already. So if we're not spending money, we don't necessarily need to make a lot. Right. So it it's working out. Uh, this has worked out really well for us. This the people who have come yeah. are good people. Uh, Tom, the fellow who's running it, is very, very yeah. good at what he does. Uh, so I do feel like you just said there is a, a, a space in the industry for just education. And if we could step into that space when nobody else is particularly doing that, then that's a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. For everybody. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, I man, really I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, everybody. We get asked all the time, how do we help? How do we help? How do we help? This is how you guys help with the FreeMind Network. We are introducing our sponsorship packages. FreeMind Local is our first round that we're rolling this out with. If you're a local business and you look for opportunities to get your brand out there and you're tired of wasting money on billboards and radio and everything that doesn't really work, join the FreeMind Network, all right? We've got monthly packages that start at $2.99. It gets you in front of 75,000 pairs of eyeballs across our platform every month, gets you weekly shout outs, and it gets you into the system of targeted advertising. All right, get rid of that shotgun approach to your advertising and really target down, okay? Target down to exactly the interest level, target down exactly to the profession level that you're looking for as far as your services and your products. Do that with the Free Mind Network. Send me a DM today. We'll get you all the details about how to become a sponsor partner. You know my story, right?